Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, where am I? Good morning. Mario? Do you want to play a game? It's gonna be Mario Party Jamboree, uh, isn't it? Uh, how did you know? I am the Nintendo YouTuber, you know. Oh, I Scott the Wall. No. Yeah, at the car. How do you not know who I am? You kidnapped me. Hello? Just let me play the game. Oh, okay. Don't get pissy at me, Mr. Fancy YouTuber. So what is it exactly? And I'm gonna use this switch that was just lying here on the floor in this dungeon, by the way. What is it exactly you want from me here? I want you to review the game like one of your videos. Except for just you and me. So you do know who I am. You think you He's not a Nintendo YouTuber. <laughs> ah! oh, okay, let's go! Oh, sorry. Uh, let's go! This kidnapping is sponsored by Delete Me. Obviously for me this is me. I'm, th I'm doing an ad read. Did you make me do an ad read? Okay, your money on the brand is got to get the page. You know what I'm saying, you know? Delete Me's name couldn't be more accurate to the service they provide. They will literally delete you and your personal information off of the internet. This is something we all already know, but our personal information is constantly being sold to data brokers. But that's our information and we do have a right to protect it. Obviously for me, I'm somewhat of a public figure online. So having a service that can delete my name, my address, my phone number off of all of these gross websites online that log it without my permission is so important to mine and my family's safety. I mean, that's the number one reason I trust Delete Me. I wouldn't want to get myself kidnapped. But also, let's be serious, I doubt you want to be stalked by anybody either, or fall victim to phishing scams. Best part is when you use Delete Me, you don't have to just hope and pray that they're doing something on your behalf. They actually send you monthly reports with everything they've done, including the amount of man hours it took to find and remove your information, the amount of listings reviewed and removed. For me, just in the first month alone, they removed me from 48 different sites and they're working on getting me off of 60 more. I'm getting a cut of this, right? And he's on TikTok. I can pretty much guarantee if you look up your own name and information, you'll probably find it listed on, on one or more of these sites, especially if you live in America. It's really predatory and I hate it. So do what I did and have Delete Me work for you. Go to joindeleteme.com forward slash beat'em or click the link below or click on the QR code that's been on the screen this whole time to get a 20% off coupon. Thank you, Delete Me, for sponsoring this episode. I honestly wish I'd used your service sooner because then maybe I wouldn't be in this position. All right, well, conveniently, I played through the whole game while you were rambling about the sponsor. So if you're ready, I'm gonna review this for you now. Go on. Okay. Oh, wait one minute. You broke popcorn. Okay, go on. Well, to start, if I was to retitle Super Mario Party Jamboree, I'd probably call it Super Mario Party, the best one there is. And I know it's kind of a long title, but I really like Jamboree. It's definitely, at the least, the best Mario Party we have had in quite literally years. And I'm not counting Superstars, only because essentially it was a remake of all older content with nothing new. That said, it was sick. 
and at that point, that was my favorite Mario Party in a long time. But this being completely fresh, with five new boards, and even having two classic boards, and a ton of extra modes, I really love this game. Let me tell you about it, since there's nobody else here. This isn't terrifying. So as I said, there's seven total maps, which is a lot more than we've been getting recently. There's also new items and new abilities. They reintroduced the buddy system in a whole new way. This is the most strategic, focused Mario Party game in a long time. It's just like the old days with so much more added in. Let's start with the maps because this time each one is so different and unique and offers something new. So you have Mega Wiggly Tree Party, which is a classic easier style map, which has a huge center circle with a constantly moving wiggler with spaces on its back, which keeps changing the direction you'll end up in while you cross the center of the map. Then you have Rainbow Galleria, which is a mini mall essentially with three levels to the mall and they're all connected by escalators and elevators which makes getting around the map a little convoluted in the best way. Goomba Lagoon! This one might be my new favorite map in the game and for a while. I mean visually it's just really pretty but also the mechanics of the map is just cool. It's a tropical island with a tide that rises and lowers every few turns, removing and revealing spaces. When there's high tide you'll end up stuck on whatever part of the island and you're on at that time, just going around in circles. That adds a lot of strategy in trying to stock up on warp pipe or custom blocks to find your way off whatever part you get stuck on. Or there's a new item for this map specifically, which is a tide shell, where you can give that a little blow and then you can control the seas like Poseidon. I love this idea of each map having unique items for it. But this map isn't even done. There's also an active volcano that if you walk past, it'll explode gold goombas and if you're squish one, you'll get five extra coins. I never get bored of playing on this one. Roll'em Raceway. Speaking of Mario Kart, this is if Mario Kart and Mario Party had a baby, and I love it. Everybody races around the track in carts, and I mean literally race. You go around this track faster than any other board. There's even a special unique four dice item that allows you to roll four dice and then blast through the rest of the map. Western Land. This is one of the classic maps remade. It's an old Wild West Town with a train that can chug forwards or in reverse, smashing your opponents right back to the start of the board if you hit them. I just wish they changed the outfits of the characters to like old Western outfits for this one. That's how it used to work in Mario Party 2, and it'd just be a really cute touch. Then there's Mario's Rainbow Castle, or I guess it'd be your castle. This is like a traditional easy style board. There's nothing too special about it, but it's cute. There's one other one, but we'll keep it secret. You should actually play this for yourself and enjoy the discovery of finding out. There's a battle pass in this game, don't worry. It's completely free, you don't have to spend money. But the more you play, the more points you earn and the more things you unlock. And you can unlock customization items for the plaza and other cute little things. But the top tier for each of the new stretches of the battle pass is something cool, like a, a whole map to unlock. I do really love Mario Party. I've always loved Mario Party. But the mini games aren't my favorite part of Mario Party. It's not that I can't stand them, don't get too upset with me. It's not that I can't stand them. I like them, it's just I always lose. And they're just not my favorite part. For me, when I play Mario Party, I love the strategy. I've always been big in board games and strategic games. I used to love playing chess as a kid. I love the strategy. I love screwing people out of stars. I love manipulating my way around the board and picking my routes very carefully and planning five moves ahead. It's all about the board gameplay for me. So when it comes to the mini games, I don't have too much to say, but I will say that there's a ton of new ones. They throw in a bunch of old classics as well, and they're all really fun. You can decide if you want to turn off motion controls, if you'd rather just play with a pro controller, or just not have to deal with motion control mini games. but all of the new mini games are really fun, and I don't really feel the need to review every single one individually. I'll just say that I actually like them all quite a bit. Again, as someone who loves the strategy of Mario Party, I do often get annoyed with bonus stars. I love and hate them. They're really fun when I'm getting them, but I seem to never get them. And I play the game so well, I'm winning right up until the end, and then someone else gets two bonus stars, and it's like my whole hour and a half of playing was ruined. And Jamboree added something that I never thought they would do, and I can't say thank you enough, Pro Rules. 
It's not something I'd want to play with every time, because Mario Party is fun when it's random, but it's nice that if you want to get serious, it's kind of like doing a 1v1 in Smash and turning off items. You really just want to find out who's the best at the core gameplay. I swear to you, this is the best Mario Party we have had in literally years. And believe it or not, that's just all the stuff in the main game. There's a more? Yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> and do you have any, like, food or water, maybe, that I could have? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have any food here. Okay. Well, anyway, so... Yeah, back at like the plaza. I'm so very sorry. Easily my favorite thing is the Koopalathon. You can go online with up to 20 players. It's this mentality of just a bunch of people competing in mini games to see who can outlast and live the longest. But they're all a very unique style of mini game, and there's even mini games in here for all 20 players to play at once. It's nuts! So how it works is you have a track that you run around and you have to get five laps. You have no control over your character as it runs, rather it goes off to the side of the screen almost like a TikTok or Instagram reel and then you're playing on the left hand of the screen and the better you do with the mini games over everybody else the more points you get and the more spaces you move. There's things that can knock you back too like they incorporated Bowser into this mode and if you lose the Bowser mini game you get yeeted back up to 30 spaces. It is so hectic and so much fun. This really does just come down to skill and who does the best at the mini games. You can get items as you play that send debuffs and, and things like squid ink over to other players while they're trying to do their mini games, but it's not too much of a hindrance and I love that they added it. This mode is really well thought out, a ton of fun, and I hope they flesh out this idea some more. The worst part is though, Nintendo being classic Nintendo, you can only play these modes in single player, which is very frustrating and disappointing. Oh, oh wait a second, I thought you could create the role other your friends and then go online and play together. Yeah, but if you do that, then it's just you and whoever you invited into your party playing against a bunch of bots. There's no way of actually searching online and it just fills the remaining slots with CPUs. Which means the only way to get a full player 20 lobby, you have to play solo. That's so horrible! Yeah, that's a Nintendo. For some reason, it's par for the course with all of their online experiences. There's always these just frustrating hangups with certain things for no reason. It also goes without saying, that's the same for the full Mario Party board game element too. You can only play with your friends and you can't search online to fill those remaining slots. The only thing I can assume is maybe Nintendo doesn't want players and friends ganging up on random people they find online. Since, you know, you're more likely to steal a star from a random person online than, you know, one of your buddies and ruin a perfectly good friendship. Oh. I've always said having a true friendship is like having another brother or a brothership. Not only is that a little cringe, it's also not this week's game. You're a little ahead of yourself. So I thought you wanted to watch the review, not ruin it. If you could just well, Zowie. eat your popcorn. Anyway, there's another new mode called Bowser's Kaboom Squad, and I'm not as sold on this one, if I'm being honest. So once again, you play online with a ton of players, and you play in this fictional little city where Bowser's running around trying to ruin you by stomping you or spitting on you or whatever else Bowser does. You should know. You've, you've, you've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with that guy a couple times. And it's you and everyone else's job to run around, smash crates, get bombs, put them in a cannon, blow up Bowser, and at the end of each round's countdown, you play a big cooperative mini game together. The catch is, the better you do with the mini game, and you'll be rated all the way up to S, the better items you can grab to go back into the little mini city and then try and defeat Bowser with. It was fun the first couple times, and then it just gets a little old. It's not as exciting to keep playing through as the Koopalathon was, but I do appreciate the idea. I don't know, have you got like a chair I could sit in? The cement floor is kind of giving me like a flat ass. You don't have to reply, it's fine. I'll just, 
we'll just keep going. So over on this Joy-Con Island, there's two more completely side optional games that you can play. One's Toad's Item Factory. This is a unique mode where you use both Joy-Cons to control different blocks around the map independently and you try and feed a marble through a course. And then at the end, all the marbles you feed through get stamped and make one of the dice blocks that you'll find and play within the game. Man, what a cute idea. I mean, the dice blocks are such an iconic part of Mario Party and I love that they found a way to kind of bring you into making the dice blocks. And then Rhythm Kitchen is, again, all motion controls and it's like cooking. You help them cook. Again, I'm not really about the mini games. I, I, I just want to play Mario Party. Then there's just the most wild mode of all. It's Paratrooper Flight School, where you grab both the Joy-Cons, extend your arms all the way out and fly around maps and flap your arms as Mario. There's even like a, a taxi style game. You remember Taxi? Did you ever play like Sega Dreamcast with Tax? Never mind. You go around and you pick up toads and then you drop them off somewhere else. Again, I'm just really not here for this and it's a little too gimmicky and annoying. So that mode's not for me, but I'm sure kids would love to fly around. That's all just the stuff in the main game. And you go back to the plaza, there's a ton of stuff you can do here too. Most of it is just busybody stuff. I mean, you've got buying stickers that then you can go and spam during the Mario Party games to annoy all your friends. You can make a very problematic player card. It logs automatically all of the people you find online, their player cards, which are cards that you design yourself with backgrounds and stickers. And when you give people the ability to make whatever they want, they're gonna make whatever they want. <laughs> And I found some really funny ones myself just by playing online. I'll just let them speak for themselves. You should go and check your player cards and see what's in there for you. If you, who, me? Plan on playing the game. Yeah. Mario, I'm too busy kidnapping people. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And you might think that that's everything Mario Party Jamboree has to offer. And you would be wrong. There is another really cool, unique mode they added. The Party Planner mode, where it is quite literally your job to go into the Mario Party boards and help plan the party. It's kind of like a little mini light RPG where you can run around the Mario Party maps freely, which I gotta say, that alone is actually pretty satisfying. It's like getting a developer tool or something. I kind of love that on its face value. But on top of that, you go around and you talk to all the characters and the, and the Goombas and the Koopas, and they'll all have side quests that they need you to help fulfill, like finding the fishing rod for the Goomba Lagoon fishing mini game. Every time you complete one of these little side quests, you get a mini star. And once you get 30, I think, mini stars, you've completed setting up the party and you can move on to the next board and help plan that party. I had a lot of fun completing all of these party planner modes and helping set up the boards. I just love where Nintendo's head was at with Jamboree. And the best part is all these little things, they're not a waste of space or fluff or things that I don't care about that frustrate me because I'm like, just spend more time making the actual Mario Party good. They made the Mario Party good. The way the buddy system works now is pretty funny. So randomly throughout the game, buddy will spawn on the board of Donkey Kong, Rosalina, Yoshi, you name it. The first player to get to the buddy, and you have to get there quick because they only stay for a few turns and they leave, will activate a mini game where everyone will play to try and win the buddy, but the person that got there has a huge advantage in whatever mini game it is. But they went the extra mile with these mini games because they're all set to the theme of the character that you find, and then depending on who wins, gets to keep the buddy, they'll each have their own unique ability, but every buddy will let you do everything twice. So if you land on a blue space, you'll get double the coins you would normally get. It is crazy to me how many different effects and abilities there are, but also how ridiculous the double thing can get, even down to landing on a Bowser space and having to visit him twice, which means, yeah, you could lose two stars by visiting Bowser. I wasn't sold on this mechanic initially. I thought maybe it would ruin the flow of the game, but there was one moment I had while streaming with a friend where I was set to win the game and I got one space away from the star. One of the other players managed to catch up to me, walk past me, steal my buddy, then immediately get the star and buy two of them. And just like that, sniped the victory using a buddy. Oh, oh, my, oh god. my god. That was big brain move. Oh, and he took Donkey Kong from you. Holy shit.
<laughs> Holy sh! No oh my god, King! I don't think I I don't think you're winning, King. I told you I'm not gonna win. I told you. I can't even be mad. I mean, that was just a sick play. I'm so glad Nintendo moved away from Mario Party's nine and ten, where you all were stuck in the same thing and moving around together. Because for me, it eliminated all of the strategy that I like in these games. Superstars brought me back in, but there just wasn't much there. There wasn't much content. There was only a few boards and they were all very samey but super mario party jamboree everything is so unique everything is so different from every time i roll those dice and play a new game even with the same people or different people i have such a different gameplay experience and i've had an absolute blast playing this game it is an ultimate mario party it has everything i love and new things i would never have expected i really like the place we're in with mario party now i hope this is the direction Direction they take moving forward. I really truly do. Well, that's everything. I don't know what else you want me to say. You want to like and subscribe? Was this good for you? It's beautiful. I love it. You know, I brought you here because I thought you were going to hate it again. Like you hate everything Nintendo does these days, but. Hearing how much you loved it, I'm glad. I, I thought I was gonna have to get Hey, I don't hate everything Nintendo does. I don't know why everybody always assumes that about me. I'm really glad you liked it. Did you say you were gonna kill me? Well, anyway, I guess it's a time for you to go home. Go where? I'm back to bed.